it was pretty amazing this morning when I jumped on the scale, I had lost a pound because my, my goal is now in the next two weeks is to try to get to the two forties. And I was two fifty one this morning. And when I entered into my Fitbit, which I got right here, just kind of wait, all of a sudden it popped up an update. Congratulations on your hundred pound weight loss. Wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> So you didn't even know it. Like the I didn't know. Stuff. No, because I wasn't tracking, right? <laughs> hey, how's it going? It is your muscle building coach, Lee Hayward here. And today I have the opportunity to chat to one of my coaching students, Jeff Lombard, and he's been part of the Muscle After 40 Blueprint coaching program for several months now, and he's made some amazing progress. And the cool thing with Jeff is we both work out at the same gym. We both work out at Platinum Health and Fitness in Conception Bay, South Newfoundland. So I get to see him in there on a day-to-day -day basis or several days a week anyway. And every time I see him, it's like he's getting leaner, he's getting better. And we're going to share that journey here today, share the story of it. Jeff, glad to have you here. Like we're doing a conversation now through Zoom and uh, I just wanted to uh, let everybody know like who you are and where you're from and how did you come on board? How did you find out about me and this whole coaching program? <laughs> oh, thanks, Leaf. This journey, well, it's been a long time. I, yeah. uh, I'm originally from Ontario. Do you have yeah. to clarify that because there's an Ontario in, in uh, I think in California, California. As well. so Ontario, Canada. <laughs> yes, I'm from Ontario, Canada. Yeah. Recently moved here about a year and a half ago. Met you. I've made some amazing results. I mean, when I lived in Ontario, I followed you for a number of years watching your videos. Fitness has been a struggle for me uh, ever since my mid-20s. When I was younger, a pretty good athlete. I played very high-level hockey, lacrosse, okay. football. I was in really good shape. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until uh, my son was born. My first son was born. Right. And I kind of just got pregnant with my ex-wife. And uh, it, it hasn't stopped. I can relate to that, man. Like I, like I went through my own journey after Harvey was born. I, I, that's where this whole muscle after 40, lose the dad bod type of thing came about. So here, I can relate. Yeah. And, and my battle too, also, I was a long haul truck driver. So I never had the opportunity to get much exercise. I think the most exercise was getting out of the seat and jumping to the back of the bunk and going to bed. Um, so that's where a lot of my weight gain came on. And uh, that's been almost 30 years. Wow. Just constant, constant battle with weight. So uh, how old are you now? I'm 50 years old. 50 years old. So the big five O. Oh. I always find when somebody hits an age with a zero on the end of it, like that's that cause you to reevaluate. That's like a milestone and you got to like reevaluate where you're heading in life. I know it certainly did for me when I hit the big four O oh, and I'm sure it'll be another milestone now when I hit the five O oh as well. So Jeff, like, let's just start back. Like, I mean, you mentioned you were an athlete in high school, played different sports and that, like what really happened? Like, like to get off track, if you will. For me to get off track, the first thing was when I played hockey, I played yeah. hockey in Nova Scotia. It was high level hockey. Okay. Off season, I went back to Ontario to visit my parents and I was kind of fooling around playing pickup hockey at the rinks just to stay in shape. I take a face off and the guy ends up falling on top of my leg and bust my, bust my knee up. Whoa. Ripped a lot of tendons, tore my ACL. Jeez. I've had three major surgeries on my, on my knee battling with that ever since. Holy um, smokes. So it's been a constant battle since then um, yeah. with weight. Still haven't had the ACL fixed. He had done three surgeries by then, fixing up my tendons and my ligaments. Mm -hmm. He had said, I'm not touching your knee um, until you lose all your weight. And he wow. says, to top it off, your knee, you have a knee of a 90-year-old. Whoa. Yeah. He says, by the time you're 50, you probably won't be walking. Oh, okay. That's comforting, but uh, Holy I'll be walking. Shit. Holy, I mean, yeah, I mean, not only are you walking, I mean, like, you're doing regular cardio. I mean, like, I know one of the primary forms of cardio, I, I see it. So I mean, I know it, you, you do a lot of walking on the treadmill, especially over the past winter. Yep. And you know, just recently, you, you got a bicycle, which is so cool. I mean, to get out bike riding now, I mean, I, I, like, so to think that your doctor told you you're not going to be able to walk to now like you're working out, you're doing cardio, heck, you're, you're going bike riding. I mean, you're like a kid again, from that perspective. <laughs> there, there's pain. I, I fight yeah. through the pain. I'm, I'm determined. Like I said, I'm very mm -hmm. determined with, uh, with this program and I'm, yeah. I'm going to succeed. So are you still due for like knee surgery or something like that? 
Uh, yeah, I, he, he told me he'll do it once the weight comes off, but I, I don't think I'm going to even bother. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't bother me to the point where it's so painful I can't get up in the morning and move. Mm -hmm. To go have a, a major surgery like that where I'm going to be laid up probably six months, Right. I, I don't think I'll do it. That's interesting. So like, how heavy were you at your start? Like when you, when you started this whole journey to decide, okay, I'm going to lose weight and get in shape. Like where was your rock bottom? And, and the reason I'm asking this is because a lot of times people have to hit their personal rock bottom before they say, you know what, enough's enough. I, I'm not doing this anymore. I got to make a change. So like, what was that for you? Believe it or not, it wasn't the 395. That wasn't my rock bottom, but I, I knew I had to lose weight because the doctor told me I had to lose weight. I think the rock bottom weight was about 355 where I finally woke up and say, Hey, you know what? I'm getting older. I better mm -hmm. do something about this. And when I moved here, I was about 355 and that was my wake up call when I moved to Newfoundland. And that was my determination is to get back in shape. So you were, when was that? When were you 355? About? January, 2020. And yeah. what was your heaviest weight? 395 was my heaviest weight. Oh, wow. Okay. So like, and when was that? That would have been probably about uh, four, three and a half, four years ago. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I, and I carried that for a long time. That's big. I mean, you know, like that, that's right on obese. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I mean, that's... it you can't move. You can't function right. Your knees hurt. Mm. Everything hurts. And were you still driving truck then at 395? Yes. So, I mean, that must have been a chore just to get in and out of the truck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just to walk to the back of the truck and open the doors in the trailer was a, a it was a big deal. A wow. big, big deal. Couldn't, couldn't find clothes to fit me. I had to go to a special oversized men's store to buy clothes just to fit me. Mm -hmm. Safety gear for work. They had to buy extra, extra, extra large just, you know, get right. stuff to fit me. Wow. You, you reached out to me back in November of last year and you weren't that big then. So, I mean, obviously you were working out up until that point. So like, what did you start with when, when you decided, okay, you hit your rock bottom and you were going to take action. Like, what did you do? I think it was just before the COVID lockdown. I just, after the COVID lockdown, the first, the first lockdown we had, I said to my partner, I said, you know what, I'm going to join the gym. And I, I've, I've said that for years. I'm going to join the gym and I've joined gyms in the past. And I've went and I've stopped and I've went and I've stopped and I've tried all kinds of diets and I've tried everything, but it was, I think a week after the lockdown, I finally, I don't know how many times I drove by platinum health and fitness and said, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to sign up. I think I drove by there probably 15, 20 times before I got the nerve to walk into the gym and say, Hey, what's this about? And I didn't even sign up then. It wasn't until my partner came with me. I signed up. So when, when was that? Do you remember when you signed up? Probably, I think it was May or June of so last year. The first COVID, yeah. The first relatively recently, like literally just a year ago. Yes. The, to, to me, this focus is, is just recent. Wow. Okay. And yeah, you came on board in November and I believe you were somewhere around 300 pounds. Is that correct? Yes. And th this is the cool part. Where are you to now? <laughs> I'm at 251. And when I joined with you, our, wow. our goal was when we chat, it was to be in the 250 range in a year. And I just, I can't believe the progress uh, throughout the journey so far. It's, it's been awesome. Wow. Oh man. I'm, I'm so excited for you, Jeff. Like, like, geez, like 49 pounds since November. So I mean, from November to April, 49 pounds. And again, we, we had set this as, as a year and, and, that's the way I always like to approach fitness and fat loss is like, don't be looking for too much too soon because that quick fix solution usually sets people up for a downfall. Cause yeah, they, they go pedal to the metal right from the get go, but it's not sustainable. It's not enjoyable. And if you feel like you're suffering through and starving and depriving yourself, there's only so much of that you can take before you say, you know what, it's not worth it. Screw it. I give in the, hung the hunger, the cravings, and you just go back to your old habits. And then very often people go back to their old habits and then they feel guilty and then they want even more junk food and, and stuff to comfort food to make them feel good in the moment. And then it's just this negative spiral and just continues on. And, but in your case, just to see that, that rapid transformation, and it's, I consider that rapid, basically 50 pounds in the matter of six months, 50 pounds. That's respectable. I've battled, like I said, battled with weight for years. Mm -hmm. I've tried numerous things 
and uh, got to the point where I got sick. Uh, tried diet diet pills, which and put me in the hospital. Whoa, okay. Um, mind you, it worked. Worked really well. <laughs> um, but oh. put me in the hospital for six months. Jeez, that's that's scary. Okay. This approach that you're going through now, like, I mean, I, I've, I've been able to see your progress firsthand, but like, how does this feel? Like this whole process that we're going through now? Um, it's, it's become a norm for me now. I know when I first joined with you, it was quite a struggle to, mm-hmm. to switch my diet and to cleanse my body where I'd start getting used to healthy foods. I remember talking to you when I first joined, talking about I've never craved for a salad. I crave a salad almost every day now, every wow. day. And it, it re, after the first two weeks, I find the first two weeks were the toughest. After that, it's just like been cruise control. I just, nice. it's, been, it's been so easy. I'm, you know, and I went through that stage where I was hungry all the time. And, and you explained to me, you know, that's part of the body and the metabolism picking up. And, and I still go through that stage every now and then, but it seems to have leveled itself out. But it's, it's very easy. I, I don't find it difficult at all. So like, does it feel like you're on a diet? <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely. I get to eat whatever I want. I have my cheat days. Mm-hmm. And when I cheat, I cheat pretty good. But <laughs> I know after my cheat day, it's time to get back on track. And the next day I'm back on track. No, I, I respect that. And the thing I just loved about there, you're actually craving vegetables. And when I say this to normal people, if you will, like, I, I don't know, like, People who are who are going through this, we're not normal. Like you're you're a different breed once you're going through this because you're looking at food and fitness and, and and just lifestyle in general from a different lens. But the average person, the whole idea of craving vegetables, like when people can't wrap their head around that. And no. I'm the same way. Like I have to have again. I, I love big garden salads, and it's just something that I've gotten into because it's so much volume and then it's nutrient dense. I mean, it's nourishing your body on the cellular level, but it's, it's, that's my secret to filling up. So when I want to sit down and, and just have a big hearty meal, I always have that big garden salad because that's going to fill my belly with low calorie dense foods. And again, nourish you, give you the fi- fiber, the phytonutrients and the enzymes and all that stuff that your body's craving and needs, but it's not loading it up with empty calories. I mean, I bet 395 pound Jeff wasn't craving a salad a day. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I remember when I was driving truck in Ontario, you'd stop at every service center to try Burger King, Wendy's, McDonald's, just to see what they had. Mm-hmm. You know, I couldn't imagine doing that now. Sure, I know what you're going to say here, but like, what was a typical diet for 300 plus pound Jeff? Or- I'll wake up, you know, maybe go to Tim Hortons, get a, a bagel and a pop with my bagel because I'm not a coffee drinker. Afternoon would be McDonald's or Wendy's, whatever the, the choice was along the way. And that would probably be three times a day. That wouldn't be twice a day. That'd be three times a day for the 395 pound Jeff. So fast food, three times a day. Basically. All the time. Never nothing healthy. I would never go for a, a banana or a salad or anything like that. No way. No way. Wow. The greasier, the better. And so like, what's a typical day's eating look like now? Just kind of like the, the contrast before and after, if you will. Wow. Lots of, uh, lots of healthy foods. That's for sure. My typical breakfast would be uh, a couple eggs mm-hmm. on a low fat bread. Yeah. Lunch would be a salad with some rice and uh, some chicken. Okay. Gotcha. So that's my typical day of, of eating. And uh, I eat lots of rice too. Like I love rice. Mm-hmm. Uh, lentils and beans and stuff like that love that okay Lots of it. yeah gotcha nice but the salads are, are my go-to so how, how many meals a day do you normally eat if you ask denise how many times i eat i eat every couple hours <laughs> okay um whether it's going to grab a protein bar or, or a snack I'm, I'm or banana i'm always i'm always eating every couple hours i need to have something in my mouth and it's all generally generally healthy right every single time, but three major meals a day is what I eat Mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Uh, And like I said, every couple hours, I'm sticking something in my mouth just to hold me over. My body says I need to eat. So I'm going to eat. I'm going to listen to my body. Right. Gotcha. Okay. If you hear any noise in the background, that's my son out there. He he got a flute over the past weekend and he's got a xylophone out there. So you might hear, we might be musically entertained during our conversation here today. (laughs) 
So just just to let you know what, so you're wondering where's that noise coming from. So Jeff, like you're you're eating a lot of food here. I mean, I, I love that, and I'm kind of the same way myself. What's the, the the old saying? Like this old Zen saying, like when you're hungry, eat. When you're tired, sleep. Like like don't overcomplicate things. You know, like just listen to the body, let it happen. Yes, and, and that's the approach that I like to take. So many people try and force themselves. Like if they feel hungry, they're no, I can't eat because I'm on a diet or they're that guy who avoids the social situations. And this was me back when I was a competitive bodybuilder. Like I wouldn't go to restaurants. I wouldn't go to family get togethers. You know, people would say, oh, it's, it's your grandmother's 80th birthday. Hey, we're having a party and there's, you know, going to be food and cake and celebration, a barbecue, whatever. I'd make an excuse not to go because I didn't want to be tempted by the food. And I knew if I was around it, I, I was going to give in, I was going to eat and binge and then feel guilty. Whereas now I make it work. I, I like, I have no anxiety about food anymore. And it's, it's such a liberating feeling because I know as long as I'm good enough, but good enough consistently tipping the scale in favor of more good days than bad, it's going to happen. And I mean, it sounds like you're going through that kind of process yourself. And when, when I first started with you, I had my fitness pal and I logged everything and I had my limit to where I would eat. And I followed that for the first three, four months. Right. Every day I logged everything. Now I eat when I'm hungry. Nice. I don't log, I don't log anything. Don't log anything. Yep. Just as long as whatever I'm putting in my mouth is going to benefit my body. It's awesome that you mentioned that because I actually did a video the other day talking about the pros and cons of, of nutrition tracking. And there's a time and a place for, for my fitness pal and, and for calorie counting and logging. And, and part of the initial program, you may remember when you came on board, there was a, a detailed sample meal plan with all the calories, protein, carbs, fat, and macros laid out for you. And I provide that as, as a template to go by, but I, I'm very clear, like it's just a template, you know, it's a guide and an ideal situation, but take this and make it your own, right? That's what I always encourage people to do. Take it and make it your own. And if, if you've never tracked food, like, so you don't know what a, what a protein is and what a carbohydrate is and what a fat is, like, there are people out there who do not know. I mean, yeah, it's, it's ironic. Our school system will teach us history and science, algebra and calculus, but they won't teach you how to eat right. They don't teach you the fundamentals of nutrition. I mean, even our gym class is, is what? Go play sports. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but like, there's no, at least when I was going to school, I don't know, maybe it's changed now, but there, there was no true physical education in terms of like, how do you take care of your health and fitness? How do you take care of your body? I mean, I did not see that when I was going to school right now. I, I didn't either. I mean, as far as uh, weight training and stuff like that, I, I couldn't tell you what was healthy to eat. I couldn't tell you what was good right. to lift and how to build muscle. I just, whatever coach told me to run, I ran. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. So like if for someone who has no prior knowledge or, or education when it comes to nutrition, I do recommend, I say, you know what, let, let's track your food at least for the first few weeks. Like let's, let's get a MyFitnessPal account and let's actually break it down and weigh out your foods. So you actually know, okay, how much am I actually eating? What's a good serving of protein? What's a good source of vegetables? What's or, or protein, carbs, and fat? Like understand all the different foods. But once you know it, you know it. You don't need to be a slave to tracking it over and over again. There was another guy in our group. You'll know him, uh, Jason Golden. I, I got a lot of respect for Jason. Jason's a, a numbers guy. He's the spreadsheets guy, the numbers guy, the analytical. And when he came on board with the program, he had gone on a streak of over 500 days of not missing a meal in my fitness pal. Log wow. every morsel of food he put in his mouth for 500 plus days. I, I don't know the exact number, but it was over 500. And then I, he came on board and I'm like, I respect that, Jason. I said, man, that's awesome. It's great. You know, kudos to you, but you're wasting your time. And he's like, what? And I said, like, just trust the process. You know, just, just let go. Almost like Obi-Wan telling Luke, you know, use the force, Luke, let go, right? Turn off your targeting computer and just take the shot. <laughs> right? I'm a big Star Wars fan, if you haven't guessed already, right? Yes. <laughs> but so I just said, like, just, just let go and just trust the process. I mean, like, you know what, what a serving of protein is. You know what a serving of vegetables is and carbs and all this. Just 
focus on the habits. And one of our habits is we look at our plate like a thirds. We have a third protein, third vegetables, third carbohydrates. As long as you're in the ballpark and you're in the ballpark consistently, good enough, good enough consistently, it's going to work. And Jason started to do that. And then he started making progress. Like he started actually making better progress than he was when he was a slave to count and tracking and weighing. And he's like, do you realize how much time you just saved me over the course of a day? <laughs> now I don't need to break up the scale. I don't need to constantly be breaking up my fitness pal. And like, it's just over the day, he's just eating has become a pleasure instead of a chore. It's so right? true. It's so yeah. true. You know, yeah. um, it, it, it takes time to, to fill it. I mean, my, my fitness pal has made it even easier because you can take a picture of your food now and it gives you everything. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. so it makes it much easier, but there's no need. Once you're into the program here and you know, you just, yeah. I eat whatever I want. Yeah. Because it's healthy for me. But you, you, we've changed those habits. So what you want now is foods that are actually nourishing you and fueling you and obviously is working. I mean, heck, 50 pounds in the last six months. I mean, that's that's incredible progress. And at this stage of the game, like wh where do you see yourself in the in the next six months? I, I have no set goal and I haven't really thought about where I want to be. Uh, I just want to be the best of me. I, I want to I want to lose all my body fat and I want to gain lean muscle. But like I said, I'm not in a rush. There's no end date for me. And when it happens, it happens. And, and like I said, it's, it's going to be a lifetime thing for myself. Would I like to maybe just for shits and giggles, try to, you know, do a body building competition, say seven or eight years from now, maybe you never know, hmm. you know, right. That That's a possibility. I, I've mm -hmm. said to Denise, I said, yeah, but, that could be a possibility. Well, how cool would that be to go up and stand beside Lee on a, on a, yeah. on a podium, <laughs> yeah. right? Just, just not that I'm going to win anything, but just to say, hey, I, to do look it. where I come. You know what? I, I love your answer to that. And, and I think that's the reason why you've been so successful so far is that attitude of there is no goal. And, and I know this sounds so counterintuitive because anybody who studies personal development and stuff like, oh, you got to set your goals and you write them down and, and review your goals every day and, and obsess over the goal. But once you know the general direction you're heading, you know you want to lose fat, you know you want to live a healthy lifestyle, and you know you want this to be not just some short-term quick fix. This is going to be a permanent change. Once you know the direction you're heading, like forget the goal. Just focus on the habits that are going to lead you in that direction towards the goal. And this is something that I've really adopted over the last several years myself, because when I was younger, I was that goal driven go getter, if you will. I mean, I've got all the Anthony Robbins courses and I went through goal setting workshops and written down the goals. And, and don't get me wrong, there's power in that. There is power in that. But when it comes to fitness and nutrition, it's a different approach because there is no finish line. It's not like winning the championships or, or hitting a target or something like that. Like you're trying to do something short term. Like this is the rest of your life. The end date of, of fitness and nutrition is, is when you stop breathing, your heart stops beating. That's when it's over. Up until then, it's just, we want to keep moving forward, you know, as, as far forward as we can. Now, of course, obviously we're all going to hit a point where we start to deteriorate and grow old and die. That's, that's going to happen to everybody. But by the time I get to that point, I'd like to be able to just say like, I live my life to the fullest, did everything that I could and maximize those years versus looking back and regret wishing I was so overweight and out of shape and, and missed out on so much stuff because my body was holding me back. Like, I don't want to have that regret. I'm sure you don't either. That's the reason you're going through this. Absolutely. I mean, you know, yeah. I look at some of the older gents at the gym there and yeah, that's what I inspire to be, you know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see that. Sure. You know? For some of the guys at the gym at the, up in their 60s, it's uh, inspirational to watch some, what they do there. Right. It's incredible. It, it's, it is truly inspiring to see. And even within our coaching program, I mean, we've got some guys in their 60s who are making amazing progress. I mean, we got uh, Paul. Uh, I did an interview with Paul similar to this a while back. And his story of how he went from literally having a brush with death, almost dying from a heart attack. And, and turning his life around a full 180. And now he's in the best shape of his life in his late 60s. I mean, it's inspiring. Uh, we've got another guy in our group, uh, Norman. I mean, he, he's, I hope to do a conversation like this with Norman too sometime soon. But he's 70 years old and in the best shape of his life, like lean, athletic, muscular, strong. Like everyone's looking at him like blown away. I mean, the guy's got 
ripped muscle definition at 70. You know, it's just crazy to see. And, and it just goes to show like age is really only a number when you're following a healthy approach like this. You can continue Absolutely. making progress. Absolutely. And getting back to my point there, I was mentioning like you don't have the goal and you're not obsessing over the goal. And I think that's the reason why you've actually accelerated the the process because quite honestly my vision for you when you came on board if you could be where you're at right now it, like if you had have achieved that over the course of 12 months i would have said you were a great success and you've like literally did it in half that time which is a super success in my opinion but you did it because you're just focusing on the next step the next step not the goal if we look at it, like the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step if we keep thinking about that thousand miles okay i took the first step I still got a thousand miles minus one step to go. And it's frustrating because I got all that distance. But you just say, forget the destination and just one foot in front of the other day after day. I mean, it's, it's crazy how far you can go. And I mean, you're, you're proof, <laughs> proof of that process. I remember saying to Denise, when, uh, when I first joined up with you, you had that little thing there with all the guys, transformation pictures. I said, Denise, I'm going to be one of those guys. Wow. And that's, that was one of my goals was to be on wow. that page, to be one of them guys. And I said, I'm going to do it. I can do it. Nice. I, I, lo I love that. And that's my vision for everyone who comes on board. Like it, it's not just about taking on another coaching student for another coaching student. Like I want you to be that success story. So not only are you living it and enjoying it and reaping the benefits, but then everybody in your life, everyone who's around you, your friends, your family, your coworkers, like they're indirectly, you know, feeding off that positivity from you. Cause I'm sure like, you, you know, your partner, Denise, I see her at the gym as well. So like it's trickling over to your home life. And then I'm sure like even your, your coworkers and like, what they're looking at you like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Tell me about that. Like what, what's the impact been like with your coworkers when they see this transformation? Well, I, I was at work there one day, a couple of weeks ago, and it was a little bit of a warmer day and I've been bundled up. I wear like seven, eight layers of clothes at work. Wow. And, uh, this one day was pretty warm. So I just had my regular work shirt on and yeah. that was it and my helmet. And I got out and they, I walked up to the office and they had to take a second look and said, who's that? Wow. Where did you go? <laughs> what happened to you? Uh, fitness. I'm healthy, e eating healthy. I'm exercising every day. You know, this is, this is what you can do. And they were just, their jaws just hit the ground. Wow. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very low key. I don't go around advertising my way, even to my family. My family, until this last week, didn't even know I was on a healthy eating lifestyle, what I call it. I don't call it a diet. It's a lifestyle. Right. They didn't know either until I posted a couple of pictures like, oh, my God, what happened to you? <laughs> you know, and I have some family members, too, that are very obese. And I'm, I'm hoping that they uh, I inspire them so that they, they can make a change. Definitely. That thing of being low key with your fitness, that is another critical element. And for everybody who's watching this right now, if, if you, this is one nugget that you can take away that can literally make or break your success. When you start a fitness and fat loss program, do not broadcast to the world that you're going on another diet or going on a diet. Like don't speak it, do it. Like let your body do the talking, let your results do the talking for you. Cause so many people will put it out there and say, I'm going on a diet. I'm going to lose weight and I want to lose 50 pounds or whatever the number happens to be. And then they'll start telling their friends and their family and they're posting up on social media and they're telling their people at work. And now th there's two schools of thought on this. And the school that they're probably going for is, well, I want to put it out there and have people hold me accountable. But it creates all this unnecessary stress because now whenever people see you, how are you doing with that diet? How's that diet going? Oh, you still sticking to that diet? You haven't quit yet, have you? And, and it creates all this stress and anxiety over something that should not be stressful or anxious to begin with. So just like, don't say a darn thing. Do, do it for yourself. Now, obviously, you got to tell your, your wife or people you live with, people who are, you know, your day to day, you got to tell them what you're doing, obviously, because there's going to be some changes. But even then, don't make a big deal of it. Like, I don't try and force my eating habits on my wife or my son. Like, I've never once told my son that he's got to eat his vegetables, but he's looking at me and he's actually asking me for vegetables because daddy's always eating vegetables, you know, and, and he wants to eat them too because he wants to have muscles like daddy. 
like you know your parents when you're a kid say oh you got to eat your vegetables you got to do this you got to do that don't drink and smoke meanwhile mom and dad are drinking and smoking right so they're, uh, drink in one hand and a cigarette in the other and then they're telling you not to drink and smoke right <laughs> <laughs> you know you can't tell people what to do you just let your body speak louder than the words right so you've done that you've let your your body speak for itself and i respect that so much and that's another element of why you've been so successful because you don't have that outside pressure. Like you imagine showing up to work and every other day someone is nudging, you know, how's that diet thing going? Right? Are you still doing it? And it, it just, you know, it just gets under your skin. And then it, they're kind of subconsciously, you know, they'd like to see you succeed, but then they'd also like to see you fail because they've always failed. And, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's kind of this weird situation where people don't always celebrate your, your, your victory or, or your, your ambition. Like they sometimes want to hold you back, like the crabs in the bucket mentality. You know, you're trying to improve and like, well, what makes you think you can do that? Right. And they try and pull you back down. Whereas if you just stay quiet about it and let the process happen. And then when, when you have 50 pounds lighter and then like, what the heck happened? Like now they can't hold you back or critique you. You've already done it. And they're seeing the after results, you know, not yeah, the, I don't overplay it either. Uh, if, nice. I, if I can compliment, but no, oh, thank you very much. And I don't go into how I've done it or, just i'm doing it just this, nice. this is how it is if you want if you want to know more about how i did it then give me a call and we'll talk right other than that wow. i mean i'm getting lots of compliments at the gym and mm -hmm. great but i don't overblow it to you thanks great awesome job no it's oh thank you very much i appreciate it and that's it very humble move, in your approach move on. Again, Jeff, I, I mean, I, I, if I had a hat, I would tip my hat to you. <laughs> like, I'm so proud to hear that because that's something it took me a long time to figure out to, to just be humble in that approach. And I think it's something you get with with maturity and with age, because when I was younger and, and starting off, especially as a an eager, young personal trainer, I mean, I, I was trying to save the world. Right. And I'd go whenever I'd see my my family and that like. If, if anyone was struggling with their weight, like I was like, hey, I'll train you. I'll get you back in shape. I'll do this. And I was always preaching diet and exercise and healthy food. And for someone who's not ready to hear that or who doesn't want to hear that, I'm just a, a nuisance. Like here I was doing my best to be that eager, encouraging, you know, positive personal trainer. Hey, you can do this, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, shut up. Like, get out of my face. Let me eat my donuts. <laughs> right? you, know? you have to be mentally ready for this. It's mm -hmm. something that you have to be is mentally yeah. ready. Totally. And if, if somebody's not ready, you can't make them ready. I remember when I first joined with you, I mean, I, I go home from work and mm -hmm. I had already joined, I had to join the gym and I pull in the parking lot, at the gym, the gym parking lot would be full. I make a whole circle around the building and go straight home. I was embarrassed because I was so big. Wow. I didn't want to go in there and be embarrassed if I was doing something wrong. I didn't want anyone to critique me. You know, I had that much weight on me. I, I was, I was embarrassed, but now I don't care how many people are in that gym. I'm going in. That's a real issue for, for a lot of people. And when you're in that situation and you're going through those emotions, like again, you're, you're 300 plus pounds. You, you, you're not thinking logically, you're thinking emotionally. And Yes. How do you lose that weight? How do you get in shape? You lose it by going into the gym. But then so many people think, well, I'm too big to go to the gym. Like I got to lose the weight first. Then I'm going to go to the gym and work out. Have you ever thought that? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, in the past, I don't share this with a lot of people, but I've, I've, I've suffered from uh, deep depression a few years back and mm -hmm. uh, about myself and how I look and how I appear to other people. And it's, uh, and, and that was partially from driving truck too, because Mm -hmm. Driving truck, you're alone so much. Your self-esteem is so down, you know, right. and, and I've, I suffered for a lot of years with that deep depression and I still suffer from it. Uh, mm -hmm. Not as bad now. Uh, and when I do, I, I turn to the healthy living and, and, and the exercise, which helps me. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I suffered a little bit this winter with the COVID and, and the winter, sure. but uh, I'll tell you what, the, the exercise has made a dramatic difference. I, I can I can appreciate that. Everybody goes through their ups and downs with stress and, and emotion and, and everything else. And, and I'm no different. I, I go through it as well. But I, I've kind of conditioned myself when I hit that downs point, like when overwhelmed with whatever work, family, stress, finances, wh whatever it is that's coming at you. I mean, we've all got our own stress and crap and battle in our lives to deal with. 
And, and one of the things I really conditioned myself to do, and now it's, I don't even think about it. When I start to hit that, you know, the temperature gauge is going up and I'm like, I'm getting overwhelmed, getting overwhelmed. I just stop everything, put on my shoes. I go out and walk. Like so some people grab, grab the bottle. Some people, you know, grab a, a drugs or a snort or something, you know, everybody's got their, their mechanism for dealing with it. It's pills, food, television, whatever. Food was mine. I turned to food. Food, was right? So yeah. Whatever your, your, your crutch is, you know, whatever your, your go-to is, whether again, that's the food, drink, drugs, television, whatever. I always have it set up now. It's, it's walking and it doesn't matter what time of day or night, like if, even I've had it before where sometimes like I can't sleep because my mind is just racing with, with crap. I've had it like went out two o'clock in the morning, put on my sneakers and my reflective vest. So I'm not going to get hit by a car. <laughs> and I, I walk, I'll walk for an hour and then I'll come back. And it's just like, oh, I feel so much better. I feel so much better. And then I can come home and relax. And I'm like, everything's okay. Everything is okay. Yeah. That's my, it's just crazy how that works. But I've, I've been through that multiple times. I mean, it's, thankfully it's less and less. And I think it's because I'm just exercising more and more in advance. But when I used to hit those down points, that was my go-to strategy was just drop everything. I don't care what I'm doing, what to do, what deadline there is. I'm getting out and going for a walk. And that was my, uh, my go-to stress relief. And it, it works. It really does. Absolutely. Uh, this, this year has been my best year yet as far mm -hmm. as depression has been. Yeah. Um, and, and I thank the, the health and fitness for that. that. That certainly helps. And when I get to that gym, um, like you said, the, the hardest part about going to the gym is getting to the gym. Right. And, and uh, when I get to the gym, I'm zoned out. That's it. I got one mission and one mission only. You see me at the gym. I don't talk to a lot of people. I do my thing and I leave. That's it. I'm not there to, you know, to talk to people and chat and, and you know, I'm there. I'm there for business. I'm there to get the job done and go home. Mm -hmm. That's I it. Respect that. I mean, if you say hello to me, I'll come say hello to you. I'll have a little chat with you real quick, but then I'm right back yep. to my work. Nice. No, I, I respect that. And that that's the power of the gym versus working out at home, especially this past year. I mean, we, we've all had lockdowns. I mean, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. At one point or another, you were probably locked down. Yeah. Everybody's suffered this. And I know myself when I was working out from home, it's not the same. It's not the same intensity. It's not the same drive, not the same motivation. Uh, I would still do it. Now, I mean, I would still make it work, but I find in my case, like an hour at the gym flies by and I actually end up doing more. Whereas an hour in my home gym drags on, like an hour feels like an eternity and I'll end up Oh, I've done 45 minutes. That's enough. <laughs> and I'll call it, uh, I'll throw in the towel early. Whereas at the gym, it's the opposite. I'll, I'm more likely to do more because I'm in that environment. The phone is on mute, right? There, there's no distractions. Nobody's knocking on the door. Kids are not in the background or whatever. Like I'm there for me for this next You're hour focused. or whatever You're it is. Focused. Yeah. It's, and I, and I remember when the last lockdown, I'd be working. And I get like, I was like yourself, I made it work at home. But yeah. The first day of that gym opened, I was like a kid in a candy store. I, I couldn't have been happier. I was jumping up for, for joy. Yeah. And I've been almost every day since it's opened. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, so let, let's talk about your workouts now. So like, again, like when you came on board, I mean, I, I laid out a, a, a sample template and a guideline to follow, but you're making this your own. And that's the whole purpose of this muscle after 40 coaching program is I'm not trying to create dependency where, Oh, I got to have my coach tell me what my macros are and what my exercises are and what my, I'm doing this to teach you how to be your own coach. The whole analogy of give a man a fish or, or teach him to fish. It's the same idea, right? I'm trying to teach you to become your own coach so that you know what works best for your body and you just know it on a gut level. I, I I'm fairly new to this constant weight lifting. So I'm, I, I don't have a lot of knowledge, so I still follow your guideline. Yeah. But I add on to it as well. My weight days would be like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then the Tuesday, Thursday would be my cardio days. But I do follow your, your system still. I find it works okay. well for me. Nice. And the, the, the whole body workout is what I use. I enjoy it. I never thought a whole body workout would work, but it's working. That, that's something I've really adopted over the last couple of years as well is the idea of a total body instead of having chest day, back day, leg day, which again, there's nothing wrong with that either. Like you have to look at it from the bigger picture. I like the total body because 
if you are not 100% consistent for whatever reason, work, family, COVID, <laughs> whatever, and, and you end up skipping a day, if you're on a split, that can really throw things off. But if every day you're doing a little bit, like total body, you're doing something for all your major muscle groups, then even if you have a few days off, well, you're not falling behind. You're still hitting all your major muscle groups. And since I became a father and don't have all the time in the world to just pick up and go to the gym anytime I want, I found that that worked better for me. When I could go six days a week, heck yeah, I can do a bodybuilding split routine. I can do chest day, back day, leg day, because I got all the time in the world. But if you're working odd hours or you got family and stuff, it's, it's more practical to have a total body where you're doing a little bit for everything so that you don't end up having this big gap of like, oh, I, I, I've never hit my chest in over two weeks now because my split was disrupted or something like that. And it works really well for my work schedule because I, I, I work such a strange work schedule. When I work, I don't hit the gym because I'm just too tired because I work 14, 15 hour days and I'm done by the time I get home. Sure. But my ritual on my days off, I don't move. I don't do anything until I get to that gym, get my workout in and get home. No if, ands or buts. I got to get to the gym before my day starts. It works yeah. for me. It might not work for somebody else, but I, I lead such a hectic life at work yep. mm -hmm. and I don't work a regular Monday to Friday shift. So, right. I mean, for someone to say they can't do it with an odd schedule, it can be done. I do it. I work long hours. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm tired. I struggle some days. Today I struggled to get to the gym, but I dragged myself there. <laughs> yeah. But it, it can be done. It can be done. Gotcha. Oh, I respect that, Jeff. It, it, it's such a refreshing conversation to just be able to share this and to see like how much you've changed. Because again, I seen you when you were halfway through this journey. Like that's when I first met you. I mean, I didn't see the 395 pound Jeff or, you know, the Jeff at the rock bottom. I never seen that. I seen you when you're already on your way up. But even then, like what a transformation it's been and the best is yet to come. And that's the exciting part for it. I mean, as long as you're enjoying it, then you'll keep doing it. If you don't enjoy it and it always feels like you're suffering and starving and, oh, I can't wait for this diet to be over. Like, <laughs> you know, if, if that's your attitude, then the results are only temporary, right? Absolutely. I always say this to I me, mean, if your diet, if you're on a diet has a start and an end date, the results are only temporary. It has to be a, this is what I do every day. This is who I am. And that's what you've adopted is that. So and it was, uh, it was pretty amazing this morning when I jumped on the scale, I had lost a pound because my, my goal is now in the next two weeks is to try to get to the two forties. Right. Uh, and I was two fifty one this morning. And when I entered into my Fitbit, which I got right here, yeah. I think I got it a couple of years ago. I've lost a hundred pounds since I bought the Fitbit. Wow. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was pretty amazing. That, that, that is amazing. Whoa. I mean, that, that took some to send shivers up my spine. I mean, just to think of, of the change that you've made in that short period of time. Cause, and I, I, I never even knew it. I entered into the Fitbit and I just kind of waited. All of a sudden it popped up an update. Congratulations on your hundred pound weight loss. Wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is, so you didn't even know it. Like the I didn't know. Itself. No, cause I wasn't tracking. Right. <laughs> And when I first started this, I'd be, I'd be tracking that scale every day, every day. And like we had the conversation, I think it was yesterday we had that, yeah. where I track my weight, track my weight. Now I don't care if that weight moves or goes up. I'm seeing the difference in me and that's all that matters. Mm. And the crazy thing is, is once you let go of that attachment, the results actually happen faster and they, and they happen more consistently. And it's, because you're not stressing over it. I mean, a lot of people don't realize, but that stress over worrying about the scale and worrying about the numbers, like that's actually holding you back because that's creating cortisol and, and, and it's, it's just disrupting the whole process. But when you can just relax and enjoy the process, your body functions better, your metabolism is better, you learn to let go and just trust the process and things happen. And, and right. it's, don't, don't get me wrong. I still weigh myself every morning, but I, oh, I, yeah. don't, care, I don't care what it says. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, if I got a cheat day, I know I'm going to be up four or five pounds because I'm retaining water. But right. I know if I did that, I'm done for three days before my weight starts coming back down. I know that. And that's that's what I do. I take that. and It's worth it to me, you know, because yeah. I'm going to live life. I'm not going to deprive myself of nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. But I know I'm getting back on track the next day. Right. I'm not going to continue it. 
for me to be at the two forties, that's just a goal, a, a short goal that I have. Sure. I know I'm going to get there, but yep. it's just a matter of time when I do. Now I, I, I've bought that bike. That's going to be extra cardio for me. So that's probably just going to push me over the edge to get to that 240 quicker than, you know. Absolutely. And uh, the cool thing about a bike too, like once you, you build up to it, it's an hour on the bike. is just going to be gone. Whereas an hour on the treadmill feels like, you know, that, that's a long cardio session. You do an hour on the bike when you're going out in the trails and the fresh air and just experiencing nature, it flies by. Yeah. Yeah. It was really nice. I mean, it wasn't so nice riding against the wind, but it was great cardio to ride against the wind. Yes. It wasn't so good going out, but it was really good coming back. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to get some good weather. I mean, you, you went out for a ride yesterday when it was not an ideal day, right? Put it that way. We're, we're still in the spring. It's still cold and wet and damp and everything else. But when we get some nice summer days, I mean, that's going to be just a pure pleasure to get out and go for those rides. I can't wait. I can't wait. Who knows? Maybe we'll go on some rides together. <laughs> you never know. That'd be fun. I mean, I, I'm so proud of what you've achieved. I mean, like I, I couldn't be happier. Again, I, I would be happy if you've done this in a year and you've, you've what you've achieved in the past six months. It's like you've got a year's worth of results in six months. And I'm excited to see what the next six months bring. And so again, I, so I know it's I. not going to end at six months. This is going to keep on going because we're changing you from the inside out. It's, it's not this temporary or going on a diet approach it's we change the habits and then let that just spiral like where are you going to be in in a year in three years five years ten years that's where you need to look at this because i'm thinking like the 395 pound jeff if you were continuing down that road you probably wouldn't be here in 10 years quite honestly I'd like be here now you might not even be here now that's true yeah with the approach you're going now i mean i can see you being in the in the low 200 pound range energy living an active lifestyle and just feeling good about yourself and enjoying day-to-day -day life. Like, like I said, I'm, I'm this, this is the lightest I've been in over 30 years. So, I mean, it's quite an achievement. I, I can't remember the last time I seen 250. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing on with the journey and, and seeing that progress happen even more. Well, thanks, Lee. It's been, a, it's been a pleasure and I can't wait to see what the future holds. I really can't. I hope you got some value from that conversation. I know I certainly did. And it's inspiring to see just how far Jeff has come in a relatively short period of time. Like, it was not that long ago, he was tipping the scales at 395 pounds, and now today he's down to 251 pounds. And he's getting better. I mean, he's still on his fitness and fat loss journey. It's not over yet. And this has now become a new lifestyle for him. It's not a diet or some short-term thing that he's suffering through in the moment. This is the new version of Jeff. And that's what's so exciting. But that's what's so powerful is because... This isn't something where you, you go on a crazy fad diet, you drop a bunch of weight only to regain it back again in a few weeks or a few months. This is a permanent lifestyle change because we're changing the habits, that we're changing the core of who he is on the inside, not just giving him some diet tactics and strategies to do on the surface, right? This is changing you from the inside out, and that's why it's such a powerful system. So if you would like to make a change like this, if you would like to, to make a transformation just like Jeff has, whether that's to lose 50 pounds, 100 pounds, or who knows, whatever your number is, if you would like some help, reach out to me. I'll have my email address, leeh at leehayward.com. I'll put it down there in the description of this video, and you can go uh, send me an email, and we can have a chat and discuss you know, your situation, your challenges, your goals, and where do you want to be this time next year, and just see if we can come up with a realistic action plan that works for you. And if I feel that I can help you, then I may invite you to come on board with our Muscle After 40 VIP coaching program. And if I feel that it's not a good fit or that I can't help you, then I'll recommend some outside resources to professionals or people who can help you. Even though I've been doing this for a long time and I have helped a lot, I can't help everybody. And if I honestly feel that it's not a good fit, then I will suggest somebody who can help you and I'll help point you in the right direction to that next step. So either way, at the end of our conversation, you'll come out with more clarity and insights on the next action steps for you. So again, if you would like to have a chat, just feel free to reach out to me, leeh at leehayward.com, send me an email and uh, we'll take it from there. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see some more inspirational success stories like this, then I'll have some of them blooped up to the side there. You can go check those out. It's video conversations of other guys who've gone through the Muscle After 40 blueprint and achieved their own success story. So again, I'll have those posted up. Go check those out if you want. And uh, I'll be talking to you in a future video coming soon. Take care. Over and out.